This is a talk about being stuck by things in your aquarium, poison, bitten. It is not dog and gloom. It's mostly just funny anecdotes. So if you get to hurt, my friends getting hurt. I hope you were at least entertained. I hope you learned something. Okay, lion fish is probably one of the most famous things you, you might ever be stung by. It's one of the ones that, you know, a lot of people have been uh, stung by lion fish over, over the years. Um, you have to watch out for the rays on the dorsal fin, not the sides. It's all on the top of the back is, is where you have to be careful of. If you've never been stung by a lion fish, I'll try to uh, give you an idea of what to expect. Um, I got stung by a fish that was maybe 16 inches long. Um, I was doing maintenance. I did aquarium maintenance for 13 years. This fish lived all by itself in this 90 gallon display. He took up, you know, a vast area of that aquarium. He was a big fish. But he was docile, no big deal. I'd shoo him to the right, he'd stay over there, I'd clean the left. I'd shoo him back over, clean the other side of the aquarium, no big deal. On this particular day though, the cleaning lady was there. And she didn't really have anything to do, so she just sat in a little love seat that looked at the aquarium and chatted me up uh, about all different kind of topics, but kept me from finishing my job quickly. I didn't mind. I didn't have anything else to do, so it wasn't any big deal. But I ended up being in the aquarium for a lot longer than I normally would have been. Um, so I'm sitting there cleaning. I'm right-handed, and I'm cleaning the left side of the tank. So I have my back now to the fish, and I'm talking to the cleaning lady who's uh, looking at the tank. And just as I'm cleaning, she says, watch out. And just as she does, I sweep backwards with my hand, and I get stung with two uh, spines into the wrist. And then uh, she proceeded to tell me how amazed she was by this fish after I told her it was poisonous. She said he was sitting there looking at you, and then he put his head down, and the spines on his back started moving like this, and he wafted himself over right at me and stung me intentionally. He just had enough. It was time for me to get out. So it really wasn't that painful at first. Um, it was a mild pain, not that big of a deal. Um, I called my wife, who happened to work at the Pittsburgh Zoo at the time, and in the education department, not in the aquarium. And I asked her to call up to the aquarium to Mo, who was a person we knew up there, who, who was not the curator, but the main guy actually on the floor doing stuff. And so I asked Mo what I should do about this. So I went about finishing, cleaning the aquarium, got it all done was getting ready to leave um, when Deb called back. She couldn't get Mo on the phone because he's out cleaning the aquarium, wasn't near a desk phone. And, um, but she called poison control. Well, when you're landlocked like you are in Pittsburgh and you call poison control about a fish in the South Pacific, you're not likely to get the most best advice. Um, they told her to call me to take some Benadryl and put some ice on it, which is about the exact opposite thing of what you're supposed to do. Um, so I did. I put some ice on it, uh, went back to the store because I actually worked for a store doing maintenance at this time. The ice went numb the area but didn't do anything for the underlying cause. Uh, so I went back to the store, I had the ice, and I'm like, Gary, I'm calling it a day. I, I don't want to, you know, uh, it hurts. I'm going home. He was like, well, we can't just let you leave. This is, you're working here. This is an OSHA thing, the workman's comp, you know, whatever. We have to send you to the hospital. So they sent me to Forbes Hospital to the emergency room. And, and again, you come into the emergency room, you tell somebody you've been stung by a fish. They send you to chairs, and they tell you to wait for a psych consult, because they don't believe what's wrong with you. And they will take care of every single other person ahead of you that's bleeding and passed out. And you know they'll wait for you to fall out of the chairs. Um, so after they've taken care of every, uh, every person in the room, including the kids with the sniffles, they finally get around to me. and. They bring me back to the little room for a doctor to take a look at me. Now, the pain has been steadily increasing at this point um, to where it's really, really starting to kick in. It's been a couple hours now. Um, it, it's starting to really be bothersome, to, sit, to put it, it mildly. So I talk to the doctor. I tell him I've been stuck by this fish. You know, what can we do? So he was like, I, uh, I don't know. He leaves. He comes back, asks me a couple more questions. I write out the Latin name for him, and tell him it's the Indo-Pacific, you know, anything I can think of to help him along the way. He disappears again, comes back with a couple of questions. At this point, I'm sort of getting delirious with pain, but I'm not quite just out of my mind yet. But I do remember 
The third time he came back, one of his questions was, is this like a fish fish or like a jellyfish? And uh, so we weren't really getting anywhere. <laughs> so he leaves, then he doesn't come back. Um, at this point, I will say I was delirious with pain. Um, every time my heart would beat, I could feel the blood rush through my hand and through every little bone, and it was as if somebody was hitting me with a hammer with every beat of my heart, just uh, very, probably the worst thing I've ever experienced. So I got up, and I just started wandering around the hospital looking for the doctor. I eventually found him just a little bit down the way, kind of diagonal from where I was, in this lounge. Um, you know, just like uh, the doctor's lounge area, flipping through a big book, trying to find what's wrong with me. So I sit down there, and we go through the book, and we eventually find him. And he says, he says, go back to your room. I'm going to send the nurse in. We'll get you all squared away. So the nurse comes in. She grabs this pink tote that's about this big, about this deep, um, takes it over to the sink that's in the room that I'm at. She fills it up with hot water, turns it off, and then she goes back towards that lounge where I can still kind of see her, and goes in there. She throws it in the microwave for a couple minutes, then comes back and plunges my arm into the near boiling water which was a refreshing change of pace as far as pain goes. <laughs> and that's what she did for me for the next half hour with two of those totes, running back and forth, um, trying to scald me with the hot water. And what that does, there is a reason for it, the heat denatures the metal. It, it breaks it up into simpler compounds which are no longer causing pain. So that's the key with these uh, lionfish. The second time I was stung by a lionfish, was no big deal. Put my hand in hot water as quickly as possible, and uh, it went away. Now, having been stung a couple times, um, there was another case of a guy who woke, you know, his girlfriend wife found him on the floor next to the fish tank surrounded in a puddle. Um, he had been stung. Uh, it caused a heart attack in this guy. Um, so, sure, put your hand in hot water as soon as possible, but make sure you're not alone, just in case. Um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not giving you medical advice, but um, that, that's the key. Don't be alone, get it as hot as possible.